All these failures and more explain why Albanese could now be the first Prime Minister since 1931 to lead a first-term government to defeat. Now, of course, you will hear and have heard the obvious explanations like... Have you got Tourette's or something? <laughs> spending all that valuable time pleading with Australians to back his voice to Parliament when he couldn't even explain it. And when so many Australians were preoccupied with just surviving this cost of living crisis instead, they were getting poorer and poorer, inflation punishing them. Was, here was Albanese, meantime, distracted with some leftist crusade of no good to anyone. It's a good explanation. I've used it often myself. Can you contain Senator yourself? Senator Senator it's like no, you've got no, Tourette's or something. Senator is that the one Senator where you can't stop talking? Senator that is what it is. So, yep. Yep. <laughs> but it still misses something important. And that's why a year after the defeat of The Voice, Albanese is still... A fat, hairy, nosy cocksucker. That's my style. I hope you've noticed that. This is disgusting. And uh, today I'll make this point. Uh, that Albanese is still broken as a leader. And that's because... ...of his neck, like a pug. The consistency, which is not like neck at all. It's more like breast or scrotum. And that's because it was also how Albanese failed. Now, first of all, of course, he failed because of the same weaknesses that are behind so many of his other failures since. His failure to stop the collapse of his big global warming plans. His failure to keep energy prices low. His failure to protect men that offend you. And that's a good thing that people can do that. Failure to cut back on the disastrous level of immigration. His failure to keep homes affordable for the young and the poor. I could go on. All these failures and more explain why Albanese could now be the first Prime Minister since 1931. To wear a dress and look fabulous. To lead a first term government to defeat. And all those failures stem largely from the very weakness that was so cruelly exposed in the voice campaign. And this goes beyond Albanese's terrible political judgment. It was also rudderless during that campaign. It was just like a passenger. He let activists advising the government walk right over him, pushing a model of the voice that was so radical that most Australians, of course, would never accept it. And second, related, he had no command of the detail. Oh, this voice, he said, was not about a treaty. Or was it? This voice was based on a statement that was just one page. Or was it? The whole thing was a mess as Albanese was repeatedly contradicted by the government's own advisers on The Voice. The Labor Party is punishing people who don't vote for them. And I, I don't want to see that diminished. No wonder that the more that Australians heard of this complete schmozzle, the more they were against The Voice. And here's the thing. How often have you seen the same pattern revisited? Albanese didn't know the other day that his treasurer had asked for costings if the government cut back on negative gearing. Albanese didn't know earlier this year that boat people had reached Australia. Albanese didn't know he had this year let in as a tourist the patriarch of a family in Gaza whose brothers and, and sons were Islamist terrorists. And this is a man now in Sydney that Albanese still isn't thrown out either. And here is something not even his colleagues know now. Uh, I am uh, much better off uh, as a, a, a Prime Minister. Uh, I earn a good income. I understand that. I understand that I've been fortunate. Uh, my mum uh, lived in the one public housing that she was born in for all of her 65 years. And uh, I know what it's like, which is why I want to help all Australians into, into a home, whether it be public homes or private rentals or... Living in a tent in the middle of nowhere. And I know people are doing it tough. I also know 
that everyone hates me and rightly so what has albanese really achieved in these two and a half years but more importantly what does he want to achieve if he see if he is elected again now albanese after the last election was the dog who caught the car he won with no real agenda apart from the voice and his global warming crusade and after the next election what then will it be more wasted time wasted effort wasted money like we saw with the voice are you planning to retire there i'm i'm planning to be in my current job for a very long period of time that's misinformation he's no leader he absolutely disgusts me with his answers to these questions 